Hello, lovely humans. I'm Heather, and I am on a struggle bus adventure to get mentally and physically healthy. And I have definitely been making some good decisions in that direction. I make sure every single day that I am focusing as my number one goal on my to-do list for something towards weight loss. So, you know, going to the gym, making sure I'm having a fruit and a veggie at minimum, or going to dessert free for the day because that is my struggle. I'm a sugar addict. So we're starting off in the right direction. We're getting our motivation back on track. But I noticed over the course of the holidays that my judgment for how much sugar I should be having in a day and what my portion sizes are, it's a wee bit off. That's too much carbs. Since you lovely people are here to hold me accountable, I decided to take full advantage of that and go back to calorie counting for a week just to give myself the much, much needed reality check. So we survived day one. I actually just got back from my in-laws house. We had like a leftovers from New Year's Eve dinner, which I barely got a picture of because it was so good. I wolfed it down. But after going through the course of this for one day and trying to track everything, I remembered one. Why I stopped tracking in the first place, and that's because if you are not the one cooking the food and there is not a calorie count available, or if you don't have the time to plug in like a full recipe for all the ingredients, it can be extremely tedious and time consuming. So that's why I stopped doing it long term. One of the reasons that I stopped tracking with my fitness pal initially when I had first started losing weight is because it started making me really anxious. I started fixating on every little calorie, not in a healthy way that causes you know, balance, but in a way where it basically felt too rigid and too restrictive, even though to some extent that was what was needed, I was not in the right headspace to do it. And it basically caused me to do like a full 180 and to start binging. And although for the most part, I have tackled the whole binge eating thing, I still really struggle with eating in moderation and not overeating. So I'm going to be very, very aware of like my mental health during this challenge. So I don't make anything worse or go off the deep end. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So I should be somewhere in like the 1600 to 1800 calorie range to lose weight based on my activity level. Stop. My cat is trying to bonk the tripod because I'm having to weigh down the stupid tripod with their scratching posts. So can't really blame them. I'm a piping hot mess. I'm not super active right now because I'm dealing with a lovely injury to my foot. So the amount of calories I can have is somewhat limited and it's very frustrating. And I just need to get them in check anyways. But instead of having 1600 to 1800 calories today, I had closer to like somewhere in the 2000 to 3000 range. And I realized that that is a very, very wide range, but that's due to most of the food that I ate today, not having a calorie count or being made by someone else. Either way, definitely too many calories. And I'm starting to notice a trend. Me and my husband got a new couch like a month ago, and we've been in the habit of having a movie night. The downside is, in my sneaky little brain, I associated movie nights with movie snacks. You see the problem there? More movie snacks on the nightly can add up. This morning, without even thinking about it, while we're having like a movie day, I was having one of those like double decker oatmeal cream pies. My brain registered, okay, this is too much sugar because I started feeling kind of sick halfway through. Didn't finish it, but when I actually took the time to look at the little calorie thing afterwards, the double decker ones are 500 freaking calories. That's basically like a small meal, but it was just sugar. I'm also noticing that this little gumball machine thing that I have as dispenses, peanut butter M&Ms, it was something I got from my grandma whenever she moved. And I kind of grew up having that thing as like a little treat. Like when you'd walk by it, you would get like a couple of little M&Ms out of it. And I loved that. I made the mistake of filling it up around the holidays and then got in the habit of, you know, taking a couple when I went past. In case you're wondering, it doesn't take a very long time to go through an entire gumball machine of peanut butter M&Ms when you walk past it on the daily. Well, duh. I'm realizing that uh, I need to get the little treats out of the house. After I ate the oatmeal cream pie and it kind of clicked in that like, oh crap, things are more calories than I thought they were. I still struggled for the rest of the day with the peanut butter M&Ms, but I think I did better about making like an on purpose effort to not have humongous portions of my actual food. So I feel better there. But honestly, I feel like this week is going to be a really, really long week because I straight up deluded myself into thinking that my portion sizes and the amount that I was eating daily were appropriate.
Day two was rough for a whole different reason because your girl did not have time to plan ahead. So we had our protein shake for breakfast and then starved at work because it was a longer shift than I thought it was going to be. So the only thing I had to tide me over was some awesome cookies my coworker brought. Then I went home and basically had like a millisecond to raid my fridge before trying to visit a friend in the hospital. And then I got traumatized by some of my meal choices. Like why is a freaking PB&J 700 calories? I'm gonna make that crap myself next time because that's ridiculous. And of course, still struggling with the doggone M&Ms. I was hoping that I'd be full enough to last the rest of the day, but I was starving when I got back from the hospital. So I had some clam chowder and called it a night. Altogether for the day, my calories were like 1900 and some change, which is still over, but at least a whole lot better than that day of like the 2000 to 3000. It's 7 a.m. and the lighting is crap because it's 7 a.m., but I'm having my protein shake and trying to start the day off with making some good decisions. Not gonna lie, I kind of hate that so far the days I've done have just been like, wow, my diet's abysmal. Guess I'm putting this on the internet. So there's my incentive for today. Six and a half hours later. We survived work <laughs> and we had lunch. And I'm kind of proud of myself because yes, well, this part I'm not proud of. I did still have like two packs worth of those stupid peanut butter M&Ms and their magical selves, but I was able to actually reel myself in and be like, Biatch, you are tracking all these calories for a reason and you know you're not gonna like that. Like the number when you see what you just ate. So I kind of like checked myself before I had lunch itself and managed to have a healthy meal that was like pre-prepped from Aldi. Wasn't bad actually. So I was like, all right, cool. So I feel mentally a little better, um, but still physically exhausted from work. So we will be taking a nap and getting our life together. My body was so exhausted apparently that it knocked me out for three straight hours and I woke up feeling like I was in a completely different dimension. I did finally manage to drag myself out of bed and because frankly that Aldi meal was not super filling, I decided to have a snack. I'm very happy to say that I found a snack that works for me and that is doing carrot chips with a little bit of hummus. So Heck yes, we had a victory of finding a healthy snack. And then a little while later, after I got some editing done and felt like a productive human for once, uh, I decided to have dinner with my husband. I made meatball subs out of some leftover meatballs, which I realize is not necessarily healthy. We were just kind of working our way through the leftovers this week. It was frustrating to see that there was yet another day where I was not hitting the right calories. And it was, of course, due to my intake with those doggone M&Ms. I definitely am actively struggling with my sugar addiction and I need to really work to have some more foods that are actually worth eating because I was hungry when I went to bed. This was not a win. Hello, lovely people. Okay, it's Thursday. I'm tired as heck. My job did not need me this morning, so I have the day off, which means that because I did not do a great job of planning anything for my meals this week. It was very much fly by the seat of my pants. And as y'all saw, struggle bus heavy. I would put in a little more effort. I will say on my days off, I do have a little bit more for breakfast. So I'm going to have some cereal that I got on like a little splurge with my protein shake. I was so focused on getting the shot of me pouring the cereal that I proceeded to accidentally pour enough cereal for a small army. Well, hack, instead of having both separately, I'm just going to be using my protein shake as the milk in the cereal. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Definitely not the same thing as milk, but it's passable and I'm too tired to care. I spent the day doing a lot of editing and a ton of laundry, and I was really happy that I actually managed to put something together for dinner that, even though it was quick, was decently healthy. I had more carrot chips with hummus and a chicken sausage. It was actually pretty good. I made it through day four. Sorry if it's a little noisy up here. We have the AC on because it's upstairs and it's a little warmer. Today's calorie count was roughly 2200. I finished off the last of the peanut butter M&Ms. So they were a problem today, but will no longer be a problem. And I will not be buying more because goodness gracious, I cannot get it together around those. The other thing that kind of kicked my butt today calorie wise was my lunch choice. I had a beef pot pie because I did not have a lot of ingredients ready for like scratch made stuff and I was feeling exhausted. Glad I had the day off to rest at least. But the pot pie turned out to be like 900 calories. I beg your greatest pardon. So between that and the like 700 calorie peanut butter and jelly scandal of yesterday, it was definitely a good reminder that if the food is processed, there's a pretty good chance that one, you're probably still going to be hungry. And two, it's like triple the calories of whatever version you'd make at home. So there's my incentive to get my life together and cook. <laughs> 
The other thing I'm realizing is because I'm more aware of how many calories are going into my body, and as you all have seen from the calorie totals at the end of the day, it is too many, I have a problem getting full because of the choices I'm making for what I'm actually putting into my body. So if I wasn't calorie counting, I would actively be eating probably closer to like 3,000 calories just because I wasn't getting that check like through each meal, like, oh, how many calories am I at? I wasn't really noticing that I wasn't getting full with the stuff I was eating because I hadn't been counting. I was just like, I just eat till I'm full. When you're having a bunch of calorie dense options, it takes a lot more food to get full and that's why your calorie count ends up way up there. So for the rest of the week, I'm gonna try and be at least a little more proactive with making more nutrient dense foods as opposed to calorie dense. And then I woke up this morning and my plans went to crap. So it started off like any other day. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna get dressed, I'm gonna put my shoes on, I'm gonna look for my mental health, and then... Yet not a single serving of mental health could be found. Not a doggone thing. I don't know what was going on with like my brain yesterday, but it was just like depression station, party of one. I couldn't process a dang thing. I was so completely overwhelmed. It was ridiculous. And there wasn't really anything crazy enough going on to be that overwhelming. And I ended up having like 1700 calories before 11 a.m. because I was trying to like fight off binging and ended up just overeating at Sonic where I didn't enjoy any of it and was just getting it on impulse. I was already like so mad at myself for being over my calories for the day. I think kind of having to track every single thing was getting to me because I started obsessing over the number of calories in each meal rather than using it as a tool to just kind of keep myself in check. Finally had dinner at like nine and because it was dinner at a restaurant, I will say I was super happy because they at least had a veggie option. So I got some broccolini, but my calories for the day were like somewhere in the 3000 window, which is absurd, especially given that I was starving and wasn't satisfied by hardly any of it except for the broccoli. It's a self-care montage. Do -do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Now, today we're doing things a little bit differently. I'm rested-ish at least, so we're going to start the day off right. I'm going to change things up a little bit with how I was using the tracking app. Instead of tracking things as I eat them, because I think for some reason it just doesn't click well with my brain, I'm going to be, you know, aware by looking at the actual labels. Ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> Please. I'm going to be aware by looking at the labels of what I'm eating. And instead of just focusing on inputting my calories as I eat them, I'm going to focus instead just on what I'm eating. Instead of thinking like, oh crap, this might be too many calories. I want to look at my meals and go, okay, what's a healthy way that I can have this meal? And then at the end of the day, input everything and see where I'm at. It seems a little bit less rigid and I'm hoping that it'll work a little bit better for me to not feel like randomly mentally overwhelmed. Mental health be struggling these days. Later. So this morning I started off being like, okay, it is the weekend. I usually do tend to have my little like cereal treat over the weekend. But today I was more proactive about choosing a smaller bowl. So I had a more appropriate serving size and I did not use my protein shake because that tasted disgusting. So I used just a little bit of that Fairlife protein milk. For lunch, I did go out to eat with my dad. It's kind of a family tradition on Saturdays. And I wanted to make sure that I was focusing not on whatever my leftover calories were for the day. And then instead focusing on just what were my options that could be at least decently healthy options for the meal. So I did have for my drink, a uh, flavored lemonade, which that is what bit me in the butt because I did not realize how many freaking calories those are. When they say don't drink your calories, they mean it. For my meal itself, I basically had salmon with veggie spiral noodles. So that was only like 457 calories and I was really proud of myself. We did have an appetizer. We made sure to get the smaller option of both and we split it. And what I was attempting to do was to split a dessert, but he wasn't having it. He wanted his own, <laughs> which meant of course I got my own. I don't feel like I ate excessively. The meal itself was like a reasonable portion with everything and I didn't leave feeling disgusted. I actually was just plenty full from everything and so I didn't really feel the need to have a dinner because we had lunch late in the day. Now total calorie count for the day I believe was 2,242. Day seven's description will be done by me at like 6 a.m. in my bathroom with my greasy hair. I know. 
It's the most attractive thing you've ever seen. It's sexy. For day seven, I wanted to make sure to keep the same mindset where instead of focusing on how many calories I had left, I focus on the meal itself and just tried to make reasonable choices. This seemed to work really well for day six, even though my calorie count was too high. I feel like it was still a more balanced meal. And that was the goal that I wanted to continue. So we started off with a protein shake, just like always. No cereal this time because I had to go to work. And I was trying to make a healthy choice in spite of having no groceries this entire week and not having any food prepped. So I grabbed a little like Mediterranean chicken dish out of the freezer that I got at Aldi. And it was like 300 calories, which is already pretty good for a meal because normally there are a lot more. And it had just no taste. And I know part of it is my taste buds are used to trash, but like I literally couldn't finish more than half of it. It was just depressingly not good. When I finally got home from work, courtesy of my absolutely abysmal lunch, I was starving. So I made myself one of my all-time favorite salads. It's spinach shredded carrots topped with one hard-boiled egg, a little bit of crispy onions, a little bit of Colby Jack, and then four ounces of air-fried Tyson breaded chicken. For the dressing, instead of using ranch, which is, you know, like my favorite beverage, basically, I instead made ranch out of low-fat Greek yogurt and ranch seasoning, so I saved myself a lot of calories there. Y'all, that salad was so freaking good. Something about just like a little bit of this and a little bit of that, the leafy greens, is just one of the few salads where I feel refreshed afterwards and I don't feel like disgusted with myself and I'm like, there were veggies! Yay! <laughs> Two hours later. We're about to go for my first walk since having this stupid foot injury, so keep your fingers crossed that it stays in one piece and I'm not overdoing it. Even though it was a short, very cold walk, it felt so good to get to be active, and this is what happens when I make the effort in my diet. It translates to other healthy choices. We went to my in-laws house to celebrate, uh, I believe it's the Day of Kings. And so there's this dessert that you get like the once a year, Rosca de Reyes. It's kind of fun because it's like this delicious bread and it's got these little like sugary toppings. And so it was just kind of fun to spend some time with family. Tradition with that is usually have a cup of hot chocolate. I was actually really excited that my lunch turned out to be so crappy because it meant that I had enough calories to have my hot chocolate and my piece of the Rosca de Reyes. And I was like almost perfectly on track. And then my father-in-law with his magical cooking skills busted up with some barbacoa flautas. And I was like... <sighs> Ooh, and he's so sweet. This man knows that I'm trying to like have it together with calories, right? So he makes me like a single flauta and is like, here, if you want, because he knew I already ate dinner. But my husband was like chowing down because you just don't turn down like bomb Mexican food, especially when made by like epically skilled pants. But this man is so sweet. He made me a single one and was like, here, if you want, you can just take like a bite of it and then just give Javi the rest if you just want a taste test, which was super sweet. And as it turns out, it was too delicious. So I ate the entire thing and kind of screwed myself there and then was not able to turn down a second piece of cake. So I will say um, the end of the day was a little more fattening than intended. And I still ended up at my usual 2200 calories for the events leading up to that. At least I would say I'm starting to make progress in the right direction, but it is definitely the sugar that is kicking my patootie right now. Like I don't even know what to do at this point to get my sugar addiction under control because like, I feel like I've tried everything. It's not just a matter of, oh, just don't do it. Uh, I definitely need some more tools to figure that out. So I don't know. I'm thinking of maybe joining like Overeaters Anonymous or see if there's like a Sugar Addicts Anonymous. I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions specifically regarding overcoming sugar addiction, I would very much appreciate hearing it in the comments nicely. But <laughs> let me know. So yes, obviously I am aware that I was overeating this entire week with my calories. For the majority of the week, it was just due to my like dessert snacking intake. And that is something that I at least know that I can work on, especially now that the holiday food is like gradually running out. In regard to my mental health being on like a really rough wavelength, I'm actively in therapy. And this next week, I'm also going to be a lot more proactive now that my like injured foot is not bothering me quite as much. Fingers crossed. I'm going to be more proactive with getting my exercise in because that really does help with those endorphins. And I'm going to try to be more proactive as well with trying to take the time to plan out my meals. But I feel like I have a game plan. I know some of you guys might have watched this video and be like, good God, she's a train wreck. And while that is most definitely true, at certain times of day and sometimes the entire day. The point is that I am here and I am working on it. 
So if you guys want to join the journey as we try to all get healthy together, by all means, please feel free to subscribe. If you've ever done calorie counting before, please comment below and let me know what your experience was with it. And I will see uh, you lovely humans next time. Bye-bye.